did away with all the restrictions. And now you got six companies controlling 92% of the media. There used to be thousands of independent radio stations, newspapers, TV stations. Now the big zone, everything. Again, they did it with the Robinson, Batman, X, Sherman, Antitrust Act, Clayton, Antitrust Act, Glass-Steagall Act, one after another. When I was a young guy, there were things called grocery stores, hardware stores, stationery stores, drug stores. Now they're all chains. You like Staples? No, I like Home Depot. Oh, give me that Walmart. They've destroyed this country. Again, you look at the new job numbers coming out. Look where they are. They're, oh, they're in the service sector, healthcare sector. They're not high paying jobs. So when you look at the reality and you get and you look at the numbers and you look at the equity markets, Main Street and Wall Street have nothing to do with each other. And there's going to be a crash coming. There's going to be a crash that nobody's talking about that we've been warning about. And that is, again, let's go back to the COVID war. Lock down all the businesses. People forced to work at home. People are working at home and they're saying after week after week, month after month, year after year, they're saying, I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning to travel an hour and a half each way. Cost me all this money and I'm destroying my life. I'm not doing it anymore. And the guy that or the people that have the tenants there, the the guy renting the space say, I don't see him in these cubicles anyway. Yes, stay home. I don't need all this space. Your office. Oh. California, first month of lockdown. Your office vacancy rate, empty buildings, 37% in San Francisco. You know what it was before the COVID war? 3.5%. Nationally, you're looking at about 20% vacancy rate, vacant. Office occupancy rates, according to Castle Systems with a K, 51.4%. Occupancy. Okay. How about all the businesses that depended on commuters? Oh, they're going out of business. How about all the defaults that you're going to see as there are less tenants and these are interest rate only loans and your interest rates are double what they were when you bought the buildings and now you can't pay your loans. You're going to see a banking crisis, the likes of which we've never seen before. No one is reporting on it. No one is reporting on it. It's so exactly we're at, you know, one year anniversary, well, over a one year anniversary for the from the banking crisis. And what reforms have been ushered in, Gerald? What has changed and what's brewing is the question. I mean, what are you hearing and seeing on that front? How close are we to uh, another crisis here? They're going to do everything they can not to have a crisis before the election. That that's guaranteed. But. Whether or not they can do it is, is a guessing game. Even when you're looking at the official numbers coming from the, the feds, you're looking at about 22 banks that are, that are facing problems. Other data is showing up to almost 300. Again, barely being reported, and you're having one default after another, hardly being defo- reported. And now let's go back when they dumped all this money into the when, when Trump and Biden dumped all this dough into the, uh, into the system to artificially prop up the economy when the COVID war, when they locked down everything. Your interest rates are at zero. So now the banks own all these worthless treasuries. So they don't have the money to cover the defaults on the loans. Mm. There's going to be a crisis, and we're saying... Again, you know, one of our top trends for 2024 was a golden year for gold. As we're speaking, gold is, what, $2,360 an ounce. It's up over $300 an ounce since we made that forecast. Gold could very well hit $3,000 an ounce this year because they're the geo... You know, before I came on, Uh, on with you. I wanted to see what one of the headline stories was on CNN. The son of Asia's richest man is getting married in one of India's most lavish weddings of the year. What the hell are you telling me this crap for? What's going on in Ukraine? What's going on in Russia? 
What's going on in Lebanon? What's going on in Iran? What's going on in Israel? The Taylor Swift, you know, what? this is the crap they're putting out. This is the, what the hell do I care? Some clown getting married in, in India. Why, he's rich, and you should know that. People don't have a clue. So going on, World War III's already begun. We forecast this. We forecast World War III. You go back to our Trends Journal magazine two days before the Russian invasion. From COVID war to Ukraine war to World War. And now what's going on with the Israel war? Ramping it up against Hezbollah in Lebanon. And what did Iran say? You attack Lebanon and you go after Hezbollah full force, we're going to wipe you out. Love it, hate it, agree, disagree with anybody you want. That's not what we do. We just put down the facts and give you the implications. There is going to be oil prices. You're already looking now at Brent crude. It's almost $86 a barrel. Oh, it just moved up, what, about another $5 a barrel. They go to war with Iran. You're going to see oil prices go to Belva. And, and, oh, and they're going to keep launching more and more attacks against Russia because the United States and NATO gave them more weapons to uh, go deeper into that. They're going to be attacking oil fields, refineries, pipelines, etc. You're going to see oil prices could go up to $130 a barrel. And that's going to crash global economies and the equity markets. And again, the banking crisis is going to crash global equity markets and the economy. Again, the, and, and these are realities. These are in front of everybody's eyes to see. But again, we got to know, you know, is, who, who's, who's having sex with who and what, what are the rich people doing? Um, and, 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 is, and is Jennifer Lopez getting divorced? Um, yeah. You get it. We're joking. But... To your point about how no one's really talking about the real issues, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Gerald, I believe he's the only world leader that has openly said this, and it was kind of swept under the table, didn't make any headlines, people dismissed it. Oh, it's just the Serbian president, who cares? Yep. But Alexander Vucic said, quote, I expect this situation to escalate in the coming months, and I expect that we will face very serious consequences. I'm talking Europe, I'm talking the world. We're living in the time of the greatest geopolitical crisis since the Second World War. And I want to tell you for the sake of history, since I, of course, have certain knowledge more than ordinary citizens uh, and, and knowledge that I rely, rely on through conversations with the biggest world leaders, I expect the situation to escalate in the coming months. Coupled with another headline uh, that was kind of swept under the table of how most U.S. Uh, bases in Europe are on high alert now for a terrorism attack. I mean, I get it because I'm reading, you know, the news out of Italy. Um, but I was kind of surprised to hear this comment from Vucic because here's a world leader openly stating the obvious. I, I mean, is he one of the few? Am I wrong there that has openly come out saying this? Yeah, he's one of the few, and a number of people have been warning. And again, we've been, you know, we do trend forecasting. We, 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 you know, we we tell you what it is before it happens. And again, we're looking at the data going on here. You know, one of my lines is, "When all else fails, they take you to war," mm -hmm. and and that's exactly what's going on. 